Welcome to an example of a definite integral that requires trig substitution. Before applying trig substitution though, we should verify that basic u substitution won't work. Notice that here we have x to the third and here we have x to the second, so it might be tempting to let u equal x cubed, and therefore du would be three x squared dx, but because this x squared is under the square root and in the denominator, we cannot use this u substitution. So when applying trig substitution, the form of the square root determines our substitution. So for example, integrals involving the square root of a squared plus x squared, and because we have addition here, we could also write this as the square root of x squared plus a squared, since addition is commutative, meaning we can change the order and not affect the sum. So this is the form we have, we let x equal a tangent theta. Notice in our case, a squared is nine, and therefore a is three. So we're going to perform the substitution, x equals three tangent theta. And just for a quick review, if we had the square root of a squared minus x squared, we would let x equal a sine theta, and if we had the square root of x squared minus a squared, we would let x equal a secant theta. But again, for ours, we have x equals three tangent theta, and therefore dx would be equal to three secant squared theta d theta. Now let's go ahead and perform the substitution. When we do this though, the integral will be in terms of theta, so we'll have to change our limits of integration. Otherwise, we could find the antiderivative we write it in terms of x and then use these limits of integration. But we'll practice changing the limits of integration. So we'll have the integral. x cubed would be three cubed times tangent cubed theta, or 27 tangent cubed theta. dx is three secant squared theta d theta. So times three secant squared theta d theta. This will be divided by the square root of x squared, where x squared would be nine tangent squared theta, plus nine. Now let's determine the new limits of integration. First, when x equals zero, we would have zero equals three tangent theta, or dividing both sides by three, we still have tangent theta equals zero. So theta would have to be zero radians, which is our lower limit of integration. Next, when x equals three, we would have three equals three tangent theta, or tangent theta equals one. We should recognize this trig function value. Theta would have to be pi over four radians, or 45 degrees. So the upper limit of integration will be pi over four radians. Now let's begin to simplify the integral. Let's first analyze this square root here. Let's factor out the nine, which would give us the square root of nine times the quantity tangent squared theta plus one. Tangent squared theta plus one is equal to secant squared theta. So we'd have the square root of nine secant squared theta, which would simplify perfectly to three secant theta. So let's go ahead and rewrite this. We have the integral from zero to pi over four, 27 tangent cubed theta times three secant theta. Now we have divided by three secant theta. Sorry, this is supposed to be secant squared theta. So now we can see that we'll have three over three that simplifies to one, and also one factor of secant theta simplifies out. This simplifies to one, this simplifies to secant to the first. So we can write this as 27 times integral from zero to pi over four of just tangent cubed theta, secant theta, d theta. And now because we have an odd factor of tangent, we'll save one factor of secant theta tangent theta, and then convert the remaining factors of tangent to secants. So let's go ahead and write this as 27 times the integral from zero to pi over four of tangent squared theta times secant theta, tangent 
tangent theta d theta. And now we'll convert this tangent squared theta to secant using this identity here. Notice that tangent squared theta would be equal to secant squared theta minus one. Now if we perform a u substitution where we let u equal secant theta, notice that du would be equal to secant theta tangent theta d theta, which means all of this would just be u squared minus one and all of this would be du. And now we have the issue again with the limits of integration. We either have to change them for u or find the antiderivative, we write it back in terms of theta and then use these limits of integration. But let's practice changing the limits of integration again. So we'll have 27 times integral. Again, this will be u squared minus one. All of this is du. And now notice that when theta is equal to zero, we would have u equals secant zero, which is equal to one. So the lower limit of integration is one. And then when theta is equal to pi over four, we would have u equals secant pi over four radians. Let's go ahead and sketch a reference triangle for this. We'd have a 45, 45, 90 reference triangle where we can label the two legs one and the hypotenuse two. So if this is pi over four radians, the secant function value would be the ratio of the hypotenuse to the adjacent side which is square root two divided by one, or just square root two, which is the upper limit of integration. And now we can go ahead and integrate. We would have 27 times u to the third divided by three, or one third u to the third minus u. So we'd have 27 times, we'll first substitute u equals square root two, and then substitute u equals one. Notice when u equals square root two, square root two cubed would be two square root two, so we have two square root two divided by three minus square root two, or square root two over one. And then when u is one, we just have one third minus one. The common denominator here would be three, so we'll multiply this by three over three. So we have 27 times, this would be two square root two over three, minus three square root two over three, which would be negative square root two over three, minus one third minus one is negative two thirds. So we would have 27 times negative square root two plus two all over three, or two minus square root two over three. Notice how this will simplify though. This simplifies to one, this simplifies to nine. So we have 18 minus nine square root two. This would be the value of the definite integral. Going back to the beginning just for a moment, because this function is non-negative on the interval from zero to three, this does represent the area under the function and above the x-axis on that interval. Looking at this graph, the area of this green shaded region is equal to 18 minus nine square root two square units. I hope you found this helpful.